Matt, it's fantastic that you're here playing fretting guitars. Why did you choose that guitar? Um, I've had a long relationship uh, with JHS and, and Fred King. I've known Trevor for quite a few years and and I've always admired Trevor very, very much as a builder and as an innovator in the guitar community. And so I've watched him uh, just build Fred King from just a few models into this incredible line. And I've always been very, very impressed with him. And I've been playing Fred King probably for the last four or five years exclusively uh, at club gigs all over Texas and all over the United States. So I've always loved the guitars. Uh, basically, they gave me things that I needed. And I was able to get stuff out of Fred King that I wasn't able to get out of any other guitar. You've got a very eclectic playing style. You can play very, very well in a lot of different genres and different styles. Short attention span. <laughs> no, I've, I've always... I, uh, I've always loved textures. I've always been very driven by textures. I realize that everything I do stems back to playing an old upright piano in my parents' parlor with a sustain pedal down. And everything I've done since then, I realized a few years back that that's been based on that. So the sounds of the different instruments, the sounds of drones and harmonics and, and that kind of thing, harp scales, like this kind of stuff where you're going, uh... That kind of sound comes from playing an upright piano with a sustain pedal down. And the same thing with open tunings and the different things. Uh, and the other instruments that I play, uh, it's all come from the search for textures and the search for interesting sounds. What particular sounds do you like from that guitar? Yeah. Well, I'm very comfortable. I have a, a one-off custom model called the Matmatic that looks exactly like this. And so I'm very comfortable with this color and I'm very comfortable with the pickup configuration. Trev's pickups are tops, you know, they sound great. The coil splitter allows me to get that. especially when I drive an app and you have all these different flavors. As someone who's constantly tinkering with sound, I'm a, a producer and, uh, and I produce a lot of song, I produce a lot of bands and a lot of artists in my studio uh, in Texas. And then, so what I love to do is experiment with sounds. When you're a guitarist, if you have just one sound, I, I've been teaching for a long time and I'd always tell my students, if you only have blue paint, everything you paint will be blue. That's why it's really important to buy lots of guitars. <laughs> You've already told us a little bit about growing up playing parents' piano. Um, how did you get into playing, I mean, you're a multi-instrumentalist, but what was the first instrument you really took off on? Was that guitar or? When I was a boy, the very first guitar I had was a 1916 Dyer harp guitar, which is made in Minneapolis. It's a guitar like this, a harp guitar, and it has a large neck that goes like this with a sound hole in it with six bass strings that come right down. Wow. And it was my grandfather's guitar, then my father's guitar, and so it came down to me, and I thought that's what all guitars looked like. You know, when I was a boy, I thought everything looked like that. So I would play that guitar, and I would rest my head on it. And I would rest my head on the neck, and it still has the little marks on it, because I still have the guitar. And it's exactly like the guitar Michael Hedges played. Uh, so I don't know if you've ever seen that guitar. It's a very, very striking looking, the guitars themselves. I mean, that's what came from it. Between playing the piano with the sustain pedal down and playing the harp guitar with the extra harp strings, which you just played, you know, open while you played the rest of the guitar. So the strings come all the way across. That was kind of the thing that inspired me. And, and, uh, and I was also very, very interested in I guess I'm basically an overgrown 12-year-old boy, like many musicians, and, and I would uh, always be fascinated with shiny, interesting things. And textures, I've always loved textures. So the more flavors I have, the more things I have at my disposal, the more I could, longer I can play without boring myself. And that's really where that came from. Right, excellent. So you, um, so you go up 
obviously surrounded by music, um, then you start playing. W what was the sort of first professional job you took on? I was the guy in your school that had a beard at 13. <laughs> I was that guy. So I grew up very quickly, and I was actually performing professionally at 13, wow. sneaking into places and, and playing, and much to my parents' chagrin, I would just be like, you have to go to school tomorrow, you can't go out, and I'd be like, well, I have a gig, I have to go, I mean, I, and they would, you know, I'd just kind of jump out the window, and they know all about this, because I would come back, and the place would be locked up, and I'd have to knock on the door sheepishly, and, and, and come back in the house, and so, and eventually they realized that I was very serious about this, and I, and I loved it, and they supported me very much in my, uh, my drive to become a professional musician. Mm -hmm.